talking quadratics. Okay, so we're going to give you just a couple of, of basics on quadratics before we get started. Standard form of a quadratic, I'm going to use f of x for my y. Standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, that is called standard form. And I didn't even get either of those words. I got form, I didn't get standard. Let's try again. Standard there we go. Standard form. There we go. I was trying to send my sister a text yesterday. There was this little, she's not a little girl, she graduated, but I still call that a little girl that we both knew in common from different avenues. And we saw her yesterday, in my, or not yesterday, Sunday. And my sister said, my name's Savannah, my sister said, where's Savannah end up going to school? And I said, I don't know. So I hunted her back down and asked her where she was in school. And it was a science and technology school in Missouri that I'd never heard of before. So I was trying to send that in a text to my sister, and I could not spell science. It, kept, it wouldn't pop up on my phone, you know, like uh, I get them to automatically pop up since I'm such a bad speller. And everything I'd put in, science wasn't popping up. And I, was, I can't remember. I was trying to spell science wrong. I couldn't get it figured out. My mom was like, what are you doing? And I said, like, how do you spell science? <laughs> she started making fun of me. But I said, it's good. In school, when I start to spell a word wrong, I just write it even messier than normal, and nobody ever knows. But you can't do that when you text. you got to spell it right. Anyway, spelling was not in my genes. All right, so there we got standard form of quadratic. We got a little side story. Here. This one is called vertex form. And out of that vertex form, out of that your vertex is HK. Now notice, and this goes back to the stuff we did on absolute value functions a couple of weeks ago, that horizontal move, what was in the parentheses with the X, or in the absolute value bars with the X, was always the opposite sign. That's true here when you get your vertex. Why it says a minus h in the parentheses, but then it just says h in the vertex. So h is still the opposite, just like it was on absolute values. So you take the vertex the opposite sign mm -hmm. for k. For k, just the h. The vertical is what it is. H is opposite sign, same as on absolute value. All right. Let's. Uh, we're going to do transformations of these. That's just some basic vert uh, quadratic stuff that I wanted you to, to remember. So some basic stuff there. Let's look at some transformations of these now. If the parent function, and we made this in that chart a long time ago, if the parent function is x squared, remember that? When we made that four grid thing? How would this one be transformed? Okay, if I started with this, what would this one look like compared to that? Okay, it's got a three inside the parentheses, which means it's going to be scooted horizontally, left or right. Okay. Now, the sign in the parentheses is a minus. Remember, the horizontal is always the opposite. So since it says minus, that actually means I'm going to move it to the right. And how many am I going to move it? Three. Three. So this would be, to write this in good math words here, this would be translated, isn't that what scoop means? Translated three units to the right. And I think y'all will have a good understanding of that because that's what we did with the absolute value stuff last week. Or week before last, sometime. We did it sometime. Alright, same. Well, on those same lines now, still going to start with the parent function. Everybody got what you need there? Still going to start with the parent function, which I'll say f of x is x squared. Uh, this one, we moved it to x minus 2 squared minus 2. Okay? What did we do to get to, from here to here? Go right to and then down to. Okay, 
in here and right to and down to. Y'all agree or disagree? Agree. Okay. Inside is a minus two, so the opposite of that would be right to. Stuck out on the end, the up and down is the right sign. It gets what it says. Minus two means down to. Everybody okay on that? It's not too hard, is it? One more of those. Not too late. <coughs> is x plus 5 squared plus 1. Okay, so still going from the parent function <coughs> to get from x squared to this one, x plus 5 squared plus 1, what would we do? Left. Everybody see why it's left? Opposite sign when it's in the parentheses there. And then what? Up 1. Okay. Everybody okay on that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we got to Those were just scoots. Remember other stuff that we we did with reflections and the stretches and the streaks. <coughs> so that's what we're going to make some notes about now. Reflections and streaks and stretches, or stretches and streaks. All right. So we'll start here with reflections. C T I O N S. We'll do one, make a side for the x-axis, and a reflection in the y-axis. Alright, if I had my parent function f of x equals x squared, I'm in the x-axis side, so we're talking about that. All that it's going to do to reflect in the x-axis is it would put it, just like we did on the bell work, it would put it, no, what on the bell work was it? Yeah, it was. We put it out in front of the whole thing. Okay, so on our graph, if my f of x equals x squared is there, the reflection of it would be there. It just flips it upside down. Okay, now on the y-axis, if we started with x squared, this one's a little bit... Um, trickier in this because the negative goes in with the letter. Okay, but when we go in with the letter and we've got a negative squared, what does that end up turning into? Positive. positive. So what you see is the same thing. Now how can that be possible? Think about what this thing looks like. Right. You're reflecting over that line which is its line of symmetry. So it would be, I could take this one, see where my mouse is, I could take this one and put it over there. I could take this one and put it over there. It's the same thing, isn't it? So uh, reflection in the y-axis on the parabola is the same thing. Only time it'll be different and we're not, I don't think, I want to say we're not doing it today, but I don't want to do wrong. I don't think we're doing it. <coughs> Only time it will be different is when it gets to the sideways parabolas. So, the reflection over the y's is the exact same? Yep. When they're up, when they're when they're this way. Yeah. Yes. But what we're going to get into later, we can have sideways parabolas. Okay. So that would still, as long as it's symmetrical there, it would still look the same. If that's scooted up or down anywhere, that's when it could get different, right? Right. Sideway ones are easy, Kyle. Don't panic on that. If you folded your hot dog fold down that axis, it would land on top of each other. Huh? So, okay, we're having a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead. Everybody alright on got your notes there? Let's go ahead and do the Shrinks and stretches. And we know we can do horizontal or vertical. Alright. On a um, horizontal. We're going to be a horizontal stretch 
when our A is between 0 and 1. Okay, so like a half, a third, you're looking at a fraction or a decimal there. It doesn't make it all the way to 1. That's when it's going to be a stretch. What is A? Well, uh, excuse me. You got it, right? Everybody see what Mason was asking? Where do I get the A from? Right? shrunk it, right? You see that? I had a smaller number and it stretched it. That's backwards in my pea brain. So I would think a bigger number would make it bigger, but it doesn't. Will you never have a negative on that? If it's, I mean, it's what does a negative do to it first? What, what it? So you would do the reflection first and then you would stretch it or shrink it. Can we do an example like that? I'm sorry. Yeah, but let's, let's get them all our rules first. Okay? Everybody all right so far? Now the <coughs> horizontal, let's see, make sure I got everything on the horizontal. The horizontal, where my marker go? Throw this, throw this, where I'm gonna right. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. So I got to make sure I'm talking about hey. All right, if we are in the original parent function, what's my, that's unfortunate. Um, the A on this case will have to be N with the X. Is that a Y or an X? Right here, Y. Because F of X is one. Remember? I thought F of X is X squared. Y yes, it is. It, that's, yes, it is. But remember, f of x means the same as y. Anytime it says f of x equals, that's the same as y. <laughs> f of x is just taking it and putting it in function notation. F stands for function, a function of x. But like if I told you to graph f of x equals 2x squared plus 7 and you wanted to use your calculator, you would push y equals. f of x oh. is the same as y. <laughs> All right, vertical. Vertical uh, rules, we are a... So we did shrink, uh, stretch first. Let's do stretch first. Keep them consistent. S T R E T C H. We are a stretch when A is greater than 1. So look, it's messing us up. And we are a shrink when A is between 0 and 1. Now, it's the opposite table drop. We start off with our parent function. It's vertical when the A is just in front of the whole thing. So it's all, it matters about where that A is. And we'll look at different ones and get examples of them. Okay. I don't get the zero and then my... means it's got to be a fraction or a decimal. Because A is between zero and one, so it's not a whole number. Let's try to get some examples of these now. It's going to make more sense. That's what Macy was talking about when you can actually <coughs> see it in practice. So, I got your notes and ready to, to look. Alright, still using our parent function of f of x is x squared. g of x ended up at negative one half x squared. Directions say describe the transformation. Depends on where, if it's in the parentheses with it, or if it's just in front of the whole thing. Well, what did your notes say? There you go. You've got to be able to look back and read that. All right, so first off, we got a negative. Let's deal with the negative first. 
What does that negative out in front of the whole thing mean? Good. It's going to be a reflection. And since it's out in front of the whole thing, but you don't need that. Since it's out in front of the whole thing, it's going to be on the x-axis. Reflection on the, in the x-axis. Everybody good on that? Okay. So now I can kind of go in steps and say, all right, I've dealt with that negative. I'm done with that. The next thing i got to deal with is this one half. Now, is that one half just in front of the x squared or is it in the parentheses with the x squared? It's just in front. So is that going to be in the horizontal or the vertical? Good. So we're looking in the vertical. Now, one half, is that greater than one or is it between <coughs> zero and one? Zero. So it means it's going to be a shrink. Very good. So we've got a vertical shrink. What did it shrink by? Just one half. Now that is one difference. Right. When we did absolute values, we looked at reciprocals of stuff. This does not have to mess with reciprocals. <coughs> you need to get a swing or something. Okay. That sounds like it. She's happy to do I'm good. Um, so how do you know? I mean, so if there's no parentheses at all, then you don't know if it's outside. So how do you know it's vertical or horizontal? If the A is in the parentheses within its horizontal, if not, it's vertical. But if there's no parentheses in all the uh -huh. You got it. some stretching or shrinking here, right? Is that okay? You follow my thoughts on that? Now, that thing in front of the X, that A there, that's a 2. Is 2 <coughs> bigger than 1? Yes. Okay. Is it just out in front of the whole thing or is it in the parentheses? In the parentheses, which means it is horizontal. So I'm on my horizontal side and I knew that because it was in the parentheses. 2 is greater than 1, which means it is a shrink. I know it's backwards in my brain. Horizontal shrink of 2, right? Okay. Now it also, this one also is translated. It's scooted somewhere. Okay, because we got a plus 1 out on the end. It is translated up 1 unit. Takes an example or two, you'll be alright. Alright, before we go to the next step, I'm going to give you three of those right there to see if you can figure them out on your own. Still going to start from your parent function. Number one, g of x is one third x squared. Number two, g of x is 3 times x minus 1 squared. And number 3, g of x is negative x plus 3 squared plus 2. Alright, so if you can describe those three transformations. So I'm quadratic and negative and negative? Right.
greater than one, so that means it's going to be a stretch. Wait, why is it vertical? Because the three is out in front, it's not in here with the X. If it were in here with it, it would be horizontal. But out in front, it's vertical. And you erase the other three, so it be. All right, everybody see what the question Brooklyn was asking, the difference on that? This one's got something else happening to it also. It's inside it, so it's horizontal. Opposite way of that minus sign would be your right one. Okay, good. All right, the last one's got three things happening to it. First thing, it's got a <coughs> negative out in front of the whole thing. So we're dealing with a reflection. Everybody see that? Okay, now is it reflected in the x or the y axis if it's out in front of the whole thing? X axis. That's confusing because the three is outside, but it's a vertical. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean there are there. It is. That's that's why I try to to make my chart keep it straight. So if it's like a negative, then it's an x axis. Because if it's a number, then it's a vertical. Well, the 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 negative will always be done separately of the number. Because this is like a negative one. So remember, it's. One is not an option. On the we were greater than one or we were less than one. We were not one. So a negative one just means you're going to flip it. So do the negative first. Like if this one had a negative here, I would do the flip first. Then I'm done with that. I would go to my church shrinking or stretching. The last one's got two other things after that flip. Let's do the, um, what, do you, what do you do after the flip? Okay, left three I heard. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Rose? No, it doesn't. I'm just going left to right as I read it. Okay, after I went left three, Rose wanted to know because I said I'm in a different order than she's got them. I'm just reading it left to right. It doesn't matter on this what order you put them in. But what's the last thing I haven't talked about yet? No, two, up uh, two. Right. It's not shrink, shrunk, or stretched either one. Because this negative in front is like a negative one, and that's what I was just saying. One is one. Or shrinking and stretching, you got to either be greater than one or less than one. If you're just one, you don't shrink or stretch at all. Good. Yeah, it is. It's, it's okay. First day, something's always the... Most difficult. All right. This time, I'm going to give you some words, and we're going to wrap the equation. So we're going to go the other way. This, I'm going to give you this stuff, and we're going to wrap the function. Okay. See if we can go the other way. So let's see here. We're going to always start with our parent function. So from that, I don't know what that extra little curly Q is. I was trying to wrap. From that. We are going to vertical stretch by a factor of 4 and a reflection in the y in the x axis and a translation of 2 up. So let's just go down the list. Go in the order I got them for you there. Vertical stretch of 4. If I'm going to vertically stretch 4, does the 4 go just out in front of the whole thing or does it go in a parenthesis? Out in front of the whole thing on vertical. Okay, get on the right side on your table there. So this is going to say, to start off with, it's going to say g of x equals 4x squared. Okay, we're good so far, right? Now I want to take this one I've got and I want to reflect it in the x-axis. Reflect means I'm going to put a negative. So I'm going to put the negative out in front of the whole thing or just in with the x? The whole thing. whole thing. So now we're looking at <coughs> that. Okay, then the last thing I've got there is translated two units up. What do I do with that? Add two to the end. Add two to the end. <coughs> That's it. It's 
let me let you try one of those. I got what you need off that one. Got f of x equals x squared. I think they got it. What would that first step, the vertical shrink, look like? That? Everybody all right on that? Okay. Now this is what uh, Kylie's trying to get into Macy's head. This reflection on the y-axis. What's reflected in the y-axis, your negative goes in with just the x. But on a quadratic, you're always squaring that. So anytime a negative is squared, it turns it back to a positive. So we don't even have to write anything for a reflection in the y-axis. Are all, all the rest of y'all getting that? Well, if you did, if you had one-third times negative x squared, that's not <coughs> wrong, but you just need to remember that squared and negative is the same as a positive. So it does end up taking itself care of itself. Okay? All right, then my last thing on this is to translate 3 to the right. Now, this is where it's going to get a little tricky and confuse some of you. If I'm going to translate 3 to the right, which way is it plus or minus since it's horizontal? Minus. So I'm looking at, I'm guessing at how you're going to write it. I may be wrong. I'm guessing how you're going to write it. Okay, good. If I left it like that, that looks like that 3 is stuck out on the end, so it would mean down 3. And I don't want it to mean down 3. So they, they guessed right over here to make it look like what I need it to do. I need to add a parenthesis. Where am I going to add the parenthesis? Good. So, so I know that that's horizontal. Yeah, I put my X on the Yes. Now that I've changed it, I do need to put my X on the I have made and, and that would that would not be wrong because that squared would end up turning to a positive. Yeah, I, and I they were I would count that right, but it probably wouldn't be like ACT choice. Right, so you'll be fine. Yeah, 
growth, went through the process. That's cool. All right. I was worried about if you would leave it without the parentheses. Do you all understand why we put the parentheses on there? Everybody good on that? Good deal. All right. So now I could look at this thing, this one that we just wrote, take you a step farther with that. This is what, what you just wrote. I could look at that and I could tell you that the vertex of that parabola is at 3, 0. Okay? So I want you to look at what I just wrote, that its vertex is at 3, 0. I want you to go back to that first page that we wrote in vertex form and see if you can make that connection. So you have a question if you mm -hmm. Kylie made it. Did everybody else be able to look back there? Remember we said in vertex form, where a times x minus h squared plus k, the vertex is hk, so my vertex would be 3 from that negative 3, and then I don't have plus or minus anything, so 0. You'll see that? It's, horizontal is always the opposite way of the sign in there, and I don't know why, just how it always is. Okay, so What? Uh, X. Oh, it's right here. Oh. Tell me what. I want you to write the vertex form. The vertex form. This. Thank you. 